Hey there, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial where I am going to show you the software that I use and the processes I use for accounting within the industry of real estate. Specifically today, I'm gonna to show you actually how to record the sale of property. I'm gonna use a property that I just sold. So I just closed on the sale of a rental property that I had owned for almost 10 years. And so we logged it on the books, we logged a little bit of depreciation, we had a mortgage on it, and we sold it. And I wanna show you exactly how to record that sale and how to get all the aspects of the closing statement into QuickBooks Online. So if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I always teach by showing you exactly within QuickBooks Online. I will mention that if you're interested in our end-to-end -end real estate accounting course, we have Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp, which is ready to go for you, end-to-end -end accounting, check that out. Let's dive into today's lessons where I'm gonna talk to you specifically about closing on the sale of property. So what I have here is a closing statement of the sale. Now this closing statement is actually a little bit different than you might get. It's not like the standard format. And in fact, I think it's a good one to demo on because the standard format is actually a little bit easier. It's got debits and credits and really kind of easy to follow. This is um, something that some law firms use, which is their own little format. And basically, let, let me talk you through what happened with this property. So, so we sold it for 182,500, okay? So it says purchase price because it's also from the perspective of the buyer. So we sold it for 182,500 and as is typical, we are getting some money from the buyer on taxes that we've already paid, okay? So prorated taxes, we're getting that money back and so we're getting a total of 185,000 or so, okay? And similar to us getting some credits at, at, at sale, there's some some debits as well. So one is that the borrower already had a deposit on hand. Now that deposit was taken by my realtor. Okay, I never touched it, never hit my book. So I'm gonna show you what to do with that. We're gonna put that toward realtor fees. Also, we closed on the 29th of the month. Uh, and so we, we had two units rented there, $910 a month and 925. So what the attorney's doing here is prorating on a daily basis and saying that we owe the new buyer that money for the rent that we've collected. In addition to that, we owe that new buyer the security deposits we have on hand. Okay, so we have this total of 185.2 minus those credits to the purchaser that balances 182,000. So in theory, that's what I should be getting before my other costs, okay? So this statement here is showing how myself and the buyer, how we are working together to find out what that buyer owes to me and then all the other costs associated with the closing, which there are plenty, will come out of that amount. And that shows up on this sheet here, where we take the total received at closing, that 182, and then we start to subtract out all the other stuff. The most important one being the mortgage payoff. So I owe 87,105 on my mortgage. Now this is one that can be a little bit confusing because we have to differentiate between the principal I owe on that mortgage and the additional interest that they're that they're charging me at the end. I have my realtor fee of 99.50. Now, here's where I wanna bring attention to that deposit we received. So that deposit we received actually, you know, I didn't receive this, this actually went into here. So I'm going to put those realtor fees as 10,950 because I never received that deposit. We have search, survey, those are gonna to go to closing costs, recording fees, same thing, overnight mailings, attorney fees, Water escrow, I'm gonna to put toward utilities. What is happening here is my attorney is charging me $250 to ensure that I don't owe anything on the water. If I do, they're gonna use that $250 to pay. If I don't, in a month or two, whenever they confirm, they're gonna give me that back. Same with this here, the 1695.40. So I know that I've actually paid this tax already. For whatever reason, just the timing of this closing, this. Uh, tax receipt has not hit yet. So my attorney does not have the record of that. So all they're doing is they're retaining this 1695 just to make sure. And then once they see that it goes through, they're gonna go ahead and write me that check uh, to reimburse me for that. Okay, and then another closing cost here. So in theory, I should be getting 79,000 at, at closing. Okay, so here's how I want you to go about the sale. We're gonna use a journal entry every single time, but what I want you to think about is this amount down here, kind of our final check, is that we should get a check for this amount and it should go into our bank feed. So a question I get all the time is, how do I categorize a bank feed transaction? Um, how do I do all of that stuff right within this transaction, okay? And the answer is you don't do it all here. You're not gonna split this out and do it all here. 
What we're going to do instead is we're gonna record the journal entry and then once we've recorded it, hopefully it will show up as a match. Okay, that's what I wanna see. Okay, so one thing we can look at is, is, is this 79,361.43, is that the same that is on the closing statement? Yes, it is. Okay, so we should be all set. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna go through and record this sale. Now to do that, first I wanna look at what is the balance of this property on my books the day before I sell it. Okay, what I'm looking at here is I need to zero out my balance sheet when it comes to this property. So I currently have the property on with some land, base cost of building, I've depreciated it, and I have tiniest bit of capital improvements that it looks like I never really specifically depreciated. Either way, all of these are gonna to get to zero. That's key, important point number one. All of these items need to get to zero. Also my security deposit. So I'm paying those to the new buyer so those can zero out. And finally my mortgage, 86,489.67. That's what I have on my books. I keep really good books when it comes to my mortgage so I know that that's the value of that. In fact, I think that it also accounts for a payment that I made in July. So what I'm gonna do is we have to differentiate between this principal and the total payoff that my attorney's saying I owe. So in really what's happening here is that difference is interest. It's also the fact that I had an extra payment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record that difference as interest and then my bank will likely refund me the amount that I've overpaid and I'm going to then back that out as interest as well. So let's go through and start making this transaction. Again, I want these all to be zeroed out. So what I'm gonna do on my screen here is I'm gonna take a screenshot of this so that I, actually I'm gonna print it uh, for myself, save as a PDF and um, pull it up on my other screen just so I have it available to me and I'll keep it up here for your view as well. All right, so let's do a journal entry. Every purchase and closing uh, purchase and sale we're gonna do as a journal entry. So here I'm gonna do journal entry as of the date that I close. So 6-29-2022, this just happened a couple weeks ago. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is we wanna zero out all those fixed assets. So we know that we have land, we have building, base cost, we also have building depreciation, now in this case, I actually don't have any closing costs, okay? I didn't record closing costs. I typically do. This is one of the earlier properties I've ever put on my books. So back then I wasn't doing it. So notice I don't have any closing costs. I just have land, buildings, and I do have some capital improvements, okay? So I, I won't do closing costs on this, um, but I typically would, okay? So capital improvements, and I'm gonna do the base costs. I, I didn't record any depreciation on my capital improvements. Therefore, I don't need to bring that up in the journal entry. And this is really an easy thing to do. All we're gonna do is get this to zero. So if I have 35,000 in land, I wanna credit that 35,000 to get it to zero, okay? Now I am using location tracking here. This is a property owned by me personally. So I'm gonna put it into the business of personal, okay? I'm gonna back up my building base cost, which is 79,000. So I actually bought this property for 114,000 back in 2011. Okay, so the combo of the 35,000 and the 79,000 is that 114. I think that math works. All right, my depreciation currently has a negative 18,097, so I'm gonna debit that 18,097. Okay, and then my capital improvement, 1681.97, I'm gonna credit that. Okay, so what's happening here is my basis, what is the value of my basis? So I have a total of 115,681.97 minus 18,097. Okay, so we can do some math on that, 115,681.97 minus 18,097 gives me 97,584.97. Okay, so here is the trick when we wanna record the revenue. So I sold this property for 182,500. I'm not gonna put that in as revenue. I'm gonna put the difference between the sale price and my net basis as my realized gains. We definitely need something in there for the income we received. And it's really the difference of the sales price and my basis, okay? So QuickBooks is incorrectly just giving me that difference here. 
I'm gonna copy that and we're gonna use our little trick where we can actually we can actually do math within sales here. So I'm gonna do 182, 500, that's my sales price, minus my basis, that's my realized gains that I have on that property. Okay? So let's see if this all works out. Now we're gonna just start filling in this closing statement as we had it, okay? So if we look at our closing statement, we'll come down here. First, let's do the credits that I'm getting for taxes, okay? So whereas an expense for property taxes would be debited, in this case, we are actually going to credit that amount. Okay, so I'm going to, let me bring this over here. So I'm going to credit 1162.50 in property taxes. And I would typically put in the description exactly what it is, but just for um, speed, I'm just gonna kind of go with it here. Okay, the next one is uh, 1688, that's my school tax. And then I have one more. is 1563.68. Make sure I'm accurate here, 1563.68. Okay, cool, yep, so that total amount is at 185, okay? So, um, yep, the 203 minus the 18 would be the 185. If we didn't have the depreciation, it would all go in the credits, which is, which is kind of like the perfect way to see it. Uh, but let's keep moving down. Everything will work itself out, or at least it should. I'm gonna skip this deposit for now because again, I didn't receive that on any end before. That's actually gonna be a realtor fee. Actually, what I could do with it is put it as its own line as a realtor fee. So what I do for realtor fee is I do professional, uh, legal and professional services. Uh, let's see. Yep, professional services. So I'm going to put a 1,000 fee. Now, because this is kind of odd, I'm gonna say deposit went to realtor, okay? What else do we have? It looks like we have some rent, right? So I owe rent $60.66 because I've received rent for June, but this new owner um, has rent for June as well. Okay, so uh, this would be 6066. Uh, and we also have security deposit. And this would be, now I, yep, I differentiate them there. So here I have 910. Now you could combine some of these if you want to. I'd like to go line by line typically just so that there's no confusion if I were to ever to look at this later. All right, and let's do rental income. Oops. There's my 6166. And then last security deposit of $925. Okay, so I'm close. Now here's one thing, another little trick, okay? Now when you're going through and you're making a lot of lines here, I'd love to be able to save my work so that if I mess something up or if I lose internet connectivity, I don't lose it all. So if I click save here, that'd be great, but QuickBooks won't let me do that because debits and credits aren't matching yet. So what I recommend you do is just put something in here to be able to save the transaction and be able to come back to it later. So let's just put in whatever my next line is going to be. My next line is going to be my mortgage payoff. I have that right here at the 87,000. So why don't I just put in that mortgage? Okay, now I'm going to, that's not correct, but I'm just gonna save it. I'm gonna plant it there and save it just so I can save it, okay? I just don't wanna lose my work if, I, if something were to go wrong. Now notice that QuickBooks is guessing that 182, 285, 74. One little check we can do is that that amount should be equal to what we have total at closing, which it is. So we are on the right track. Now we're gonna continue on with the actual amounts. So here I have my mortgage payoff, 87,105.91. So I could put that all in right here. I could do that. Uh, the problem though, so I could do this 87,105.91. The problem is when I get done with this, if I look at my balance sheet, 
I've got 86,049.67. It's gonna show a negative balance. That, we can't have the case, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record this exact amount as the mortgage and the rest is an interest expense. Okay, so I'm gonna take this amount that they're saying that I owe, which check that work, make sure that that's accurate. I'm gonna subtract out what I have in, in my balance sheet, which is, whoops, I lost the whole thing, didn't I? Okay, so um, let me just get it all back here. So we're gonna do 87,105.91 minus, Sorry, I have a really bad short-term memory. 87,105.91 minus what I'm showing in my books, which is 86,489.67. Oh man, I messed the whole thing up, didn't I? Okay, let's try that one more time. So I know that I have, that's the interest. So I know that I'm gonna be paying off 86,489 67. Okay, that's how I should have done it. So I'm definitely paying that much off. All right, that's the easier way to do it. The rest is going to be an interest expense. Okay, cost of goods sold, interest expense. Okay, and that is going to be where I'm going to take the 180, 87,105,91, which is what I had before, minus the 86,489,67. There we go. The total of those is the payoff right here. Okay, sorry about that, we're good now. All right, now we just keep cranking through on these other expenses. So I have my realtor fees of 99.50. Okay, so professional services. I have this on my other sheet, I'm just gonna kinda go through. I have $830 in search, okay? Again, professional services. I don't go too crazy in differentiating between search, survey, all that stuff, like whether it's legal services, professional, ultimately it's gonna go in the same place. All right, I have a survey of $600. And I'm just following this down, so just to remind you where I'm at here. I have a recording fee of $1652.50. Again, use the description to indicate what you're doing. I have overnight mailing, so we can keep that going with professional services of $95. All right, I have my attorney fee of 695 right there. I don't know if I have a legal separately. I do, yep, legal fees of 695. Okay, let's see, water escrow, so $250 in water. Now this is where I don't really owe that yet, but they're hanging on to it. So for now, I'm gonna record that as water, all right, as $250 in water. And once I get the refund, I'm gonna record that as water as well, and it should go to zero. Same thing with this property tax, this next one, the $1695.40, I've paid that, I know I have. But for now, let's put it in. And then once I get it back, I can back it right out. All right, my last one here is uh, record mortgage discharge, $50.50. Let's call it professional services. All right, so we're kind of done. The last thing we have to do, and this is where we really find out if we did everything accurately, is this net proceeds. This should hit my bank account. So whatever bank account you would deposit that check into, pull that up, and that amount should automatically populate. 79,361.43, which is exactly what I'm showing here, okay? So that worked, it worked perfectly, all right? So I have, at the top, I'm indicating, clear out my basis, indicate my realized gains. So sales price minus realized gains equals your basis, or you could do it the opposite way, sales price minus basis equals your realized gains, and then you simply work through and record everything down there, making sure to split out your mortgage between principal and interest. Interesting piece on this one, just gonna bring this up here, 
is that on this, I actually have an escrow balance. I know I do. Now, my attorney didn't deal with that when they, they calculated the mortgage payoff. The reason why is because the bank is used to simply refunding that. Okay, so uh, if you have an escrow balance, sometimes that'll get pulled into your mortgage payoff, meaning you'd pay off less because they're retaining that mortgage escrow. In my case, what they're gonna do is just cut me a check later for it. Okay, in which case I'm gonna clear out my escrow account. All right, so we're good here. Another little tip though, what I would suggest you always do is download the transaction and attach it to the journal entry. Now, when I save and close this, a few things are gonna happen. One, I wanna look at this balance sheet and see things cleared out, okay? So I don't want to see, now I have some checking stuff, whatever. Uh, I don't wanna see any buildings, any liabilities. That's all gone, everything looks good. Don't worry about the checking account stuff. That's just, um, that's just this set of books being really old, all right? So that worked perfectly. I don't see any of those zeros. I don't see anything there. And then the last part would be to go to my bank transactions and this 79,000, now that I've recorded the transaction, I should hopefully see a recommended match. And there it is right there. So as soon as I match this, instead of going into this and categorizing it, I'm simply matching it to the journal entry that I've already created right there. All right. So recording the sale of property can be very, very confusing. I definitely understand that. What's key is to ensure that one, we zero out our balance sheet. All of our assets must be zero. All of our liabilities tied to the property must be zero. That needs to happen. Secondly, is we need to uh, ensure that we are following our closing statement accurately and making sure that we're uh, attributing those funds to the right place when it comes to the mortgage payoff, et cetera. And of course, we want to make sure that we are recording our journal entry first and then coming back to the banking feed and doing the match, okay? So I wanted to show you a very specific example. Again, I just sold that property. so. Um, it seemed like a really good time to do that. And um, let me know if you have any questions about this specifically, or if you saw something you're like, well, why did you do this? Why did you do that? If you have any other specific questions, go ahead and add them to the comments. And of course, check out our end-to-end -end course, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We have awesome students in there all the time who are learning all this stuff, applying it to their own businesses. And I am there in the Q and A's and in the membership site to help with any questions that you have, okay? So hope to see you in the course, but uh, regardless, check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com and we'll see you on the next video.